In today's video, I want to go over how I make this loop. Touchdown, Kansas City! Touchdown, Kansas City! Now that you've seen the loop, I hope you're interested in learning how I kind of came up with the idea and how I made the loop itself. I'll go over some pretty useful techniques. Anyways, inspiration for this loop came from when I was watching some highlights from a Chiefs Bills game, American football. And so when I heard that audio, I just wanted to make a loop. I wanted to do something fun and kind of different experiment with some different styles. So the first thing I did was I hopped into Illustrator. As you can see here, this is the canvas I was working with with the artboards. Initially, I put in the logos and I made an outline version and just the regular version. I just image traced it. And then I grabbed some colors from a post that they had posted on their social media so I could kind of get a color scheme to work with. From there, I laid out some artboards with some different scenes I thought could be really cool and work well together with some different colors and layouts. I wanted to keep it fairly simple and the main thing I wanted to work with here was the typography and then the football. I'm no illustrator myself, so it was kind of out of my comfort zone, but if you've seen this video that you can see up in the card, I don't know which one, but basically I talk about how it's important to be comfortable with being uncomfortable because that's how you learn. So I dragged in a, um, a reference photo and then I just used my pen tool to shape out the football. And then for the laces themselves, I just used the pen tool and just created lines. And that was pretty much it for this specific one. And I kind of liked how it turned on. I just wanted to keep it monochromatic. So I didn't want to use too many colors for this scene. And then for this text, I just kind of laid out some layouts that I thought could work really well. And, just, you know, keeping in mind how I thought it could all flow. But once I had that laid out, I hopped into After Effects. And here we have my full composition with everything in it. And I just started with a 1000 by 1000 composition, as you can see here, just a 1000 by 1000 and 24 frames per second. Now, as far as the length of the composition, I just went based on the audio. I just found the piece of audio that I thought would work the best and kind of what I had in mind and just trimmed it to that. So that served as like the base of the timing and everything. From there, once I had the audio in here, I placed a couple of markers up here. So I kind of got a feel for when I wanted each scene to start and end, just so I could keep myself on pace and on time for all the scenes that I wanted to use. I just used Overlord in Illustrator. So if you select something, you can use this little overload plugin and then it shoots it right into After Effects. And then from there, sometimes they go in as one layer. I use the motion tools and then I just, if you hit extract, it takes out all the individual groups or layers or whatever from the Illustrator file and puts them into their own shape layers. Once I had each scene kind of laid out pretty roughly, I went in and started animating. So I started with the first scene, which was the most important scene to me because it was very much out of my comfort zone working with an illustration. First thing I did in this composition was animating the ball. As you can see, it might look like it's spinning in 3D, but it's actually just a 2D animation. So the way I made this was I linked both of these to a null which I named the ball control. And that way I can animate them both at the same time and still animate the properties in each one themselves, which in some cases is super useful, especially in this one where I wanted to animate the laces and faking that 3D rotation. To start off with the ball control itself, I only animated the position and scale and throughout this project, the only things I really animated were position, scale and rotation. So just the three basic parameters that you can use to animate with. So super simple, really. It's just about putting it together and keeping timing and pacing and then Probably the most important thing is playing with the keyframes. So if you look here, I animated the position and scale to make it seem like it was kind of going closer and further away from the camera, as well as the position on the screen with when it goes closer to the camera, it's further to the bottom. And as it goes up and picks up speed, it goes further away. This just helps sell the movement that it's moving throughout a scene rather than just being on one single spot on the uh, composition. If we have a look at the keyframes here and look at the easing, I played around with the easing a little bit to make sure it doesn't ever like fully come to a complete stop, which you just do by lifting up the little points. For more information on keyframing, I highly recommend going and watching my friend Sky. His tutorial on keyframes is insane and I, it, it taught me most of this stuff. So I'd go watch that and be better at keyframes. Anyways, to sell this 3D rotating effect, of just a 2D animation really. What I did was I went into the laces, I animated the scale, but I unlinked it because I only wanted to animate the width of it so that when it's on the left side, it's skinny. And then as it goes to the middle, it goes back to its regular size. And then towards the very end, it goes skinny again. You can kind of see here that it just kind of goes from side to side. 
and then I used a loop expression just to keep those keyframes repeating so they just keep going and going instead of having to keyframe it all manually. That's pretty much all there is to it. And then just of course the echo effect. And for the ball, I made sure to keyframe the echo effect just because when it came in close, I didn't want it to be a super big trail just because it looked kind of funky. So I just wanted the trail to be the longest when it was going the fastest to really sell that speed lines because Initially, I tried to make these speed lines, but they kind of looked just funny and didn't work well. So, when in doubt, use Echo because it's just sick. Now, for this text back here, I wanted to keep it pretty simple. So, there's not really much to it. I just took each letter and just typed it out and then just centered it. I wanted to add a little bit of texture to it and make it super subtle. So I watched this tutorial by JK Motion, which I'll link in the description as well as all the other stuff I've mentioned in this video. I watched this tutorial on how to create like a chunky green or whatnot. And he included some free presets, which made it even easier. But essentially I just used that and tweaked it a little bit to get the look I really wanted. As you can see, I just kind of made it transparent almost and then just have the green just a little bit darker than the background just to separate it a little bit. And it gives it a bit of a 3D effect. But yeah, and then for so the T and the N, so the first and last letters, I just animated the position. So it animates up and then it's just stagnant and then it animates up again. This is because I wanted to keep that same momentum from the ball. So as you can see, as it goes up, the text goes up as well. So it's almost like the ball drags the letter upwards. One thing that I learned was really important for this was to keep momentum and make sure that the motions flow the same way or there's some meaning behind the motions. So with that being said, let's hop into our second scene. And now if you play this back, you can see it's just a gradient background where I use the full color gradient and a fast box blur to make it a little bit smoother and just blend those colors a little more. You can use the effect I use in the fractal noise, but since I only wanted to do four colors, there's no real reason in me using that gradient, especially because I didn't want to animate it either. And then we just have the outline logo, which I just got from in here. Just set that over with Overlord. And then the touchdown text, a simple position animation. And if we take the echo off, you can see it's a very simple, just go up. And with the echo, just adds a little bit more motion to it. And then I just animate the number of echoes out so it's not too taxing on the machine, you know. No need to have the effects visible if you're not using them. It's just extra power that your computer is using. This text is meant to come right after this. So I wanted to keep that momentum flowing. As you can see, everything is going upwards. So by having that text also go upwards with a slight trail makes it so I have a super easy match cut. So that's one of the simplest techniques you can use whether in real life videos or in motion graphics is just match cut, match the movement. So it kind of drags the momentum up. And then I wanted to switch it up a little bit just to keep it interesting. So what I did here, was I just animated the position down of this whole scene. And then I also added a tan background to match that. So I kind of get the gradient tan and then red. And that was mainly just because otherwise it just looks a bit too similar, but kind of wonky still if it was just a gradient and then the red. So I wanted some bright color to split it up. And then that goes straight into the Kansas text, which again, is just one big text layer where I just put in a bunch of A's and then the end right at the end. And then I just matched the keyframes of it. I just moved the position from left to right so that it kind of comes in right as he says, and then and all the way until he says the end. I had a, an adjustment layer where, where I added a camera shake, but I also animated the scale of it a little bit. I have a few scale animations just to add a bit more movement, but here specifically, I wanted to zoom in to create a bit of a transition between the two texts, as well as having the SAS text move slightly to the from right to left to match that movement. So again, we're using the match cut. And on this specific text, I added uh, an echo as well, so that when it scales down, it almost gets like 3D depth and just creates a bit more movement. Super simple, I just wanted to match it to when he said it. So that was really the theory behind that and just keeping it super simple. And lastly, we have the city text. So for the city text, I took the text and I split it up into individual shape layer. So each letter is its own shape layer. I animated the position, the scale, the rotation. So again, keeping it super simple. And I collected them pretty roughly down here. So if you highlight all of them, you can see they're all down here pretty much. Then animating up in an upwards firework animation almost with a slight rotation and a scale animation and then scale back down and come together. And then lastly, I wanted to carry on that movement so that when we transition into the start of the loop again to make sure that it loops and keeps the momentum, I animated the eye going upwards so that we could transition 
to the ball going upwards again in the first scene. The theory behind this specific animation was the fireworks they shoot up after scoring a touchdown. I wanted to keep a lot of the football elements and kind of draw some inspiration from real life and use it in this. So kind of like we did with the football flying um, as he scores the touchdown. And it's not even something that people might notice, but it's just a nice touch that you can always explain that, you know, it's not just because it looks cool. I actually wanted to do something with it. And if you go into our main composition again, you can see as the eye goes upwards, I have the tan background again, move upwards, and then it transitions into the first scene again, where we have the ball coming in. So kind of matching the movements and keeping momentum flowing all throughout the animation was definitely the most important part of creating this. You want the animations to make sense and be coherent because if you have stuttery, and unless it's for a specific purpose, because most of the time you want it to be moving and flowing and you know, you want it to feel right and not just like you made it on a computer where it just starts and stops, you know what I mean? That was pretty much the main animation. So if you have a look at it without all the, um, textures and little bits of extra source, this is what it looks like. So still pretty clean, but being the dirty boy that I am, I like adding a little bit of texture. I like animating on twos, just to create a bit more of that textured feel. I want it to feel like something, because otherwise I just feel like it looks too um, mechanical almost. I added a camera shake, and where I also animated the scale and whatnot, just on certain points for some impact. I had a pressurized time where I slowed it down to 12 frames per second, like animating on twos for that more classic um, animation style. Then I added some noise because who doesn't love a bit of noise? And then a bunch of sound effects, which I wanna make a video on eventually, but sound effects can elevate your design so much. It makes such a big difference. And lastly, I had these two textures. One is just a white with black particles. It's just the same one, just inverted and then a black one with white particles. Switch to blending modes of that, and you have black and white particles. And that is pretty much it for this loop. I just wanted to give like a super quick breakdown of how I went about creating this, just cause I feel like it's always nice seeing other people's processes and how they go about stuff. And I also just wanted to show you can make something super cool without knowing too much. You, This was made all with just position, scale, rotation, and just playing around with the easing of keyframes. It doesn't have to be much more complicated than that. Oftentimes, less is more. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, I would appreciate it if you subscribe, like, commented, whatever. Or even if you have some suggestions for videos you'd love to see, just to bring some value back to you guys, because you guys, all girls, have been so nice and supportive. So I figure that's a fair deal. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked the loop and the video, the breakdown. And um, I'll see you again next week. So thank you.